Hello everyone, it's story time and today I'm going to read you a favourite, The Bog Baby. Long ago, when we were little, me and Chrissy did something bad. We said we were going to Annie's house to play, but we didn't. We went fishing all by ourselves, which wasn't allowed. Chrissy said there was a magic pond in Bluebell Wood. Can you see all the bluebells? And there they are, look. It was only ever there in spring. When it rained, it made a huge pud puddle in the dell. And pond creatures came. We could fish for newts, she said. I won't tell if you won't, so we went. We found the pond. It was squelchy round the edge. The bluebells squeaked under our boots. We fished and fished, but we didn't catch a newt. We caught something much better. We caught a bog baby. He was the size of a frog, only round and blue. He had boggly eyes and a spiky tail. And I do remember he had ears like a mouse. He came swinging through the flower stalks and jumped into the water. He floated up and down on his back and he sucked his toes. He's a funny little baby. That's when I fished him out. He didn't struggle. He sat in my hand and looked surprised. He was as soft as jelly, like he had no bones. And there he is. When we stroked him, he flapped his wings. They were no bigger than daisy petals. They seemed too small for him to fly. Chrissy said, he might be able to fly if we blew on his wings. We blew and blew, but all we did was blow him onto the mud. He didn't try to escape. He just sat still with his paws over his eyes. He doesn't look very impressed being blown on, does he? We put him in a jam jar and took him home and hid him in the shed. He was our bog baby. He wasn't meant to be a secret. We wanted to show mum, but we doubt. If we did, she'd know that we didn't go to Annie's. So here they are inside the shed. And look, they're trying to look after him. We made our bog baby a beautiful home in a bucket. Gravel, shells and clean water. Look, looks lovely, doesn't it? Whenever he saw us, he jumped up and down and we picked him up and played with him. He was very ticklish and we fed him on cake crumbs. We loved our bog baby. You see him? He's getting fed. Our friends loved him too. We sneaked him into school in a margarine tub. When the teacher wasn't looking, he played in the sandpit and the water tray. In the afternoon, he slept in his tub on a piece of damp cotton wool. Look, they're all crowding round, look, having a look. Chrissy made him a collar and lead and we took him for walks in the field. There he is. Once a crow nearly ate him, but we scared it away just in time. Shoo, shoo. We took great care of our bog baby, at least we tried, but he got sick. He didn't jump up and down anymore. He went pale and his wings drooped. 
He wouldn't touch his cake crumbs. We gave him all sorts, but he just spat them out. We wanted to ask Mum for help, but we daren't because of Annie. But the bog baby got thinner. He wouldn't walk on his lead and he hid under his shell. He wouldn't come out no matter how much we loved him. You see him, there he is. He's hiding. Mum found us in the shed. Can you see? They're very worried about him, aren't they? And Mum's looking in and so's the cat. Chrissy wouldn't say why we were crying. We promised not to tell, but I blabbed. Mum wasn't angry though. When she saw who was in the bucket, she smiled and her eyes went misty. She said she hadn't seen a bog baby since she was little. Hmm. Please make him better, we cried. We love him so much. I know, she said, but the bog baby is a wild thing. He doesn't belong here. He isn't meant to eat cake or walk on a lead or sleep in a tub. She picked up the bucket and we followed her out. If we really loved the bog baby, we had to do what was best for him, no matter how much it hurt us. That was real love. That's why we let him go back into his natural habitat where he lives. Back where he belonged, living in the wood and playing in the pond, sleeping in the damp leaves under the moon. We never saw him again. I think he grew up and had babies of his own. Last spring, my daughter found the magic pond and guess what she saw. Can you guess? Yeah, bound to be. Oh, hundreds of bog babies swinging through the bluebells, catching flies, floating on their backs, sucking their toes. That's what she told me. And that's what I believe. Oh my goodness, wasn't that a lovely story? And thinking back, I wonder why. Mum smiled and her eyes went misty. She said she hadn't seen one since she was a little girl. So she knew all about what Chrissy was feeling. So, Let's hope that all of these wonderful bog babies are having a fantastic time. Looks like it, doesn't it? Now then, Mrs. Grotsky did have a go at making her own bog baby. This was back last year when I was with Miss Cook in reception class and I actually managed to make some Play-Doh, which is quite simple. You need flour, salt, water, cooking oil, and then I used blue food colouring and some lovely silver glitter for mine. But there's lots of recipes online that can help you work out how to make your own Play-Doh at home. It's really simple. And as you can see, I stuck some little googly eyes on my bog baby. And I used pasta for his wings. So I just stuck the pasta in. There we go. So why don't you try and make your very own bog baby or anything, you can make anything out of Play-Doh at all and have some fun. Anyway, I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.